Hey, welcome back to Five Lakes Garage, and today we're in the shop doing a project. Now, I did talk to my buddy Patrick, and he hooked me up with some steel. Now, he's a company over in um, Fuquay called Metalworks, and they build dumpsters and trailers and whatever else you need made out of metal. So, what we're gonna use is a giant half inch sheet of steel. Now, if you've seen all the other stuff around, uh, all my other uh, videos and my projects, you know I love to recycle material. What we're gonna use for the actual leaves part of it, power meter box. Now, if you look right here, this is basically what we're gonna cut out for these. And then we're gonna weld these up to the centerpiece that's gonna hold the flag. And this right here is actually gonna be part of the floor to lee to make it look like a, actually it kinda of looks like a cord on the cab basically what it looks like and then once it's cut out i need to weld on another piece up here because it's i think it's a 10 i think i did it 10 inches but it's only eight inches wide i kind of want to make it 10 by 10 to make it an actual square so welding it with my little dinky welder hey lincoln i need a welder um it doesn't have to be that strong it's not going to be structural we'll bevel both sides fill it with weld grind it down and actually make it look okay and then we can cut these out and actually grind them down and make them look nice and weld those on there. So hopefully it'll look good. I don't know. We're going to find out. But first, we need to cut this, uh, this <laughs> half inch steel plate. And so what we're going to use? Well, we got our little uh, plasma cutter here. It's not designed to be cutting steel this big. But I know it works if you just take your time. Now I could be destroying my, my new little toy, but if you go slow enough, it will cut through it. Just like you're getting ready to see me here, but I need to open up the doors because it is getting fumey in here because I got to cut this thing again and again and again and again and again. So let's uh, get this thing cut and see how it works. All right, so we're back on the project of making some flag holders. Sorry for the little bit of a break there, but you know, in your world, it should only be about 30 seconds, maybe even less. All right, so where are we at now? Well, I finally got finished cutting all this half inch plate, and I have to say the plasma cutter did okay, but I'm pretty much destroying my plasma cutter. So I started cutting with the uh, cutoff wheel used a few but that's okay so what i actually did was i had my plate here but it's not big enough so what we have here is i cut off another section over here now if you look down here i beveled both sides because well we only have a 110 welder anyway so basically what the idea is the weld that up there and what this is going to do is actually make me a 10 by 10 plate to where i can actually start building the, the base of my and that is still warm, even through the gloves. Uh, so this should be able to start a good base for the actual um, flag holder. So anyway, I'm gonna lock this down. I'm gonna take some measurements, make sure that is nice and square. Then I'm gonna break out the old welder, throw a couple beads, grind it down, and make it look beautiful. Yeah. All right. Oh, and uh, I would recommend a actual real welding table. Uh, the one that I made over there is actually works great on like big stuff, but stuff here where you're trying to make it flat Get yourself a welding table. This thing is pretty darn awesome. I do like it myself Anyway Let's get this down and get my fans on because it's hot All right, I'm getting ready to throw down a couple beads, but you have to be careful got yourself a really good helmet This is an auto darkening Highly recommend it. Also, get yourself a jacket. This stuff will give you sunburn, especially when you're cutting, burning in this big stuff. And also, don't forget your gloves, because you gotta take care of your hands. Now, these are some le leather, actually, they're TIG, TIG gloves, really, but I'm gonna use it for the MIG, because the big old welding gloves are big, and I can't really maneuver around like I want to. All right, let's throw some beads. All right, so don't forget your reading glasses too, because when you get old, you can't see anything. But check it out. I already did a little bit. See what you think. All right, so we got a little bit of a bead there. Now, like I said, I only have a 110 welder. And, uh, you know, Lincoln hasn't quite called me yet. 
Link and get on the ball, dude. All right, I'm gonna flip, flip this around and go ahead and beat up the rest of it. As soon as I put my glasses on, because I'm old. And actually, I started penetrating a little bit. Obviously, I'm not gonna penetrate all the way through. Like I said, 110, half inch, not gonna work all the way. There, right, kids are here. do the other side but you can see where it's kind of discolorating right there it's not too bad for what it is i guess i'm throwing one more bead down um and i'll let it cool and then i'm gonna grind it off and make a seed man they see what it looks like all right got a good weld on there all right, a couple tips for when you're actually welding something this thick when you have such a tiny little welder. Take your time, stay on the bead as long as you can because you want to build that heat up into the steel. Um, is this something I would use for something structural? No, no, I would definitely have to get a big, much bigger welder for that. Um, so what we need to do now is actually take the grinder, flap wheel or whatever, and grind down the whole thing, finish off the edges, kind of bevel everything so it doesn't scratch anybody. And then, uh, we will try to get some tubing so we can actually make the flag hole part. But the rest, it's just going to be a lot of grinding and a lot of sparks and a lot of sweat, apparently. Uh, but I can't do it right now. i got my in-laws in, so we're going to go hang out. See you in a bit. Hey, well, it's a brand new day, brand new week, and probably a brand new month. You know, life gets in the way. Summer camp, Jeeps, more Jeeps, other Jeeps, Dodges, they all get in the way. But we are back on the project of actually building these flagpole holders uh, so I got a little bit of progress done so I have my plate and it's all been sanded down and welded in and ground and all that kind of stuff took a long time to grind but that is actually ready to go so the base is ready now I need to make the actual stick itself now I took some uh, it's 1.75 120 wall DOM which is a little bit beef but hey well, I'm using a half inch plate. I don't want this thing to break. So I uh, measured off. I'm going to do about 10 inches high. So I am going to use my favorite tool of all, the slugger. It's going to cut it straight. It's going to cut it clean, but it's going to be noisy. So let's go ahead and get this thing cut so we can actually weld it on. Let's go. All right. So that's the reason why I love this saw. Look at that. Nice, clean cut. Hardly any burrs, always wear your protection, spectacles, earmuffs, protect it. All right, I'm gonna get this thing set up. We're gonna throw a couple tacks on. Bam! Let's go. All right, getting ready to weld the stuff in. Ran into a small problem. I have to move the Jeep. And of course, my batteries are dead. Again, because I don't drive them enough. I'm only one person. Got too many stuff, I guess. I don't know. But hey, uh, a couple things to remember. Always bevel your end. Grab yourself a straight edge. Because then you can make an X in the middle of it to make sure you got the exact center. Now also, I've already stripped off all the protective coating on this thing. So, once I weld that, I won't be able to get paint inside. I guess I could, but it's going to be hard. So, I'm going to go ahead and hit it with some weld through primer. Now I can weld through this, hence the name, but it will actually protect it at least a little bit. Uh, after a while, it's going to get worn off with the fly go in and out, in and out. But hey, we're going to give it a best shot starting off. So, weld through primer. Got this at, uh, I believe it was O'Reilly's, but you have to ask the tenant because it's in the back. Because apparently, they don't trust us for being fabricators out there in the showroom. So, ask them, weld through primer. Uh, I believe it's part number 7008. cool down but everything is welded up there so it should not be going anywhere i'm going to cut it out of this little stuff first and then i'm going to cut it out of some much bigger stuff and make it a little bit more stout figure this thing's going to be there for the next 50 to 100 years but i'm only going to cut out one so i can use it as a template and it's a lot easier to grind down this little stuff than it is the big stuff so 
We're gonna do it that way. Could use cardboard, but right, I'm gonna use this because I got a plasma cut. Anyway, let's cut this thing out and see what she looks like. All right, that was a lot of grinding. Uh, a couple quick tips. You probably saw in the beginning of the video and I'm sure all your actual welders and cutters and fabricators out there are wondering why in the world would I use my new plasma cutter that is nowhere near designed to actually do a half inch plate. Why are you using it for that? Well, I figured out why. See what the capabilities are for all of my equipment. Um, I exceeded that because my tip is destroyed. Now I knew I knew I, ha I have one around here somewhere. It came with the kit. There was two of them in there. I cannot find it. So I ordered some. So I had to cut the rest of them with cutoff wheels and good old fashioned. Hey, let's throw some sparks everywhere. Anyway, uh, so I have all four of the leaves or whatever they are uh, cut out and they've been ground down a little bit, but we want to make sure that they're all exactly the same. So I put all four of them together and put some clamps on it. And what I'm going to do is actually run a couple of welds across the back of it so that I can keep them all the same. They're not going to move. And then later on, I'll just ground those down. They come apart. We weld them on and they're going to look perfect ish. I'm still doing it by hand. I don't have a plasma, plasma table, even though I have access to one. I just, uh, I'm going to do it by hand. Makes me feel like I'm doing something. Anyway, uh, I'm going to throw some beads on there, then start uh, grinding some more so we can actually get them placed and welded on. And that'll be one step closer to making our flagpole holder. Oh yeah, I'm making this out of a 3 uh, steel plate. Yeah. I'll put a couple beads on the back side of it, so hopefully these do not come apart unless I really want them to. So they will be in one piece so that when I grind them, I'm going to grind all four of them down to look exactly the same. Now I'm going to take the outside and grind those upstairs because that's got the belt sander. It's going to be a lot easier and I'm not going through so many flap wheels. It'll be alright. We'll figure it out. It just costs a little bit more. But I'm going to grab my gloves and I'm going to go upstairs with my safety goggles on and go ahead and grind the outside of it to make it look basically the same. So in terms of uh, Lucky Costa, join me, won't you? No step done. All of them pretty much look almost identical. I just have to grind down this flat side to actually get rid of the weld so they can actually break apart. And then I'm gonna hit it with the sander, which is over there, just to get all of the protecting coat off so when I do paint it, it's not going to uh, peel off. I hope we'll find out. Anyway, be right back. Yeah, look at that. It's gonna be beef. Wow, that was like less than a second. I'm just that fast. Or I'm okay in editing. Anyway, uh, go ahead. I went ahead and ground down the edges. As you can see, they come off nice and pretty. Um, also, don't forget uh, any surfaces that you are going to weld, like the backside. Uh, make sure you bevel them nice and pretty like. Time to do a whole lot more sanding, which you don't need to see because it's just a bunch of sanding. That, and if I'm not recording, that means I can turn the air conditioner on or the fan or whatever because it is hot today. All right. Lots and lots of sanding. All right, be right back. Again, I keep saying that. All right, everything's been sanded down to 80 grit. I actually took a small file, one of these, and actually hand carved every one of them just to make sure there aren't any sharp edges because there are gonna be scouts actually picking this thing up and they're gonna wanna cut their fingers. So, uh, next step that I actually did here, you can see here, I uh, made a bunch of lines on it. So when I tried to tack these on, which we're gonna tack them first, just to make sure it's exactly where we want it, um, that they're actually perfectly straight. Now, how did I get these lines? Well, I used, use my quick square. Uh, if you look at one side, boom, you got a 45 degree angle. You can hit it from the side and go straight to the center. That will give you one line. Uh, the other line going straight up, this right here, hopefully if my saw is correct, it should be nice and flat. So then, you pull it this way, hold it this in this direction, put it down, line up the marks, make your mark, boom, you should have everything in line, ish. Um, if you paint it black, hey, the shadows hides a lot of things. Anyway, let's do it. Let's tell them what we'll say. All right, I'm really happy on how it's actually turning out. Uh, you looked it straight down the top, and it looks pretty straight. So I guess I did some, right? But yeah, I'm so excited to get at least one of them done. 
So let's throw some sparks. You. Yeah. All right, I know I promised you sparks, but it was a camera issue. Actually, camera operator issue. Maybe I need to go back and recruit my uh, camera crew again so I don't make these mistakes. But anyway, everything is welded up. Uh, couldn't really see it, but a couple tips here. Always make sure your welds are going in the same direction. If you have one part going this way and one part going this way, the the flat part of you know the stack is going to be in two different directions. You don't really want that. Just make sure that it's all in the same direction. If you can get your placement just right to where you don't have to lift off, start again, all stuff, make one continuous bead, that will actually help out with the look of it. Um, but like I said, this is relatively thin stuff. It's not like sheet metal, like uh, like body panels or something like that. So you don't really have to like stitch it in together. Uh, you can put it in one bead, just don't stay in one spot for too long. Also, um, with a MIG welder, it does give a MIG welder, it does give a lot of slag. So I gotta have to grind down all the little bu these little bubbles. Here, take a look. So you got all these little bubbles. There you go. Got all, ooh, that's warm. All these little bubbles and stuff like that, and that needs to go. So I'll just take the flap wheel, knock those out, take about a second to do. Uh, and then I need to sand everything down because the next step would be to paint it because she is basically done. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and do that and we'll wrap it up And because this video is getting to be long since it's taken me like over a month to get this done. But at least I got one done. Still got two more to go. All right, she's all browned down. I think she's still kind of warm, but yeah, I like it. Seems to be pretty sturdy. It's not as heavy as I was kind of hoping it'd be. I was kind of hoping to, be, you know, the scalp would have to really heave up on it, but it's only about 18, 19 pounds. Put it on my Let's Fit uh, scale. And it's only 18.6 pounds. Like I said, I kind of wish it was a little heavier, but it's okay. I think it will work. Hopefully it doesn't tip over, it doesn't fall over, it doesn't do anything. Um, we can add more stuff to it if we need to, but she is ready for paint. All right, so that is a basic uh, flagpole holder. Uh, a lot of work, a uh, lot of material, but hopefully the scouts will actually like it and it will last a really long time. So the only thing I left to do is to let it cool so we can get a good paint job and send it out. Now we might get it back a little bit later to actually paint it whatever color the troop wants to color it. But right now I think I have black, black or black or shave orange. You can do that too. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and paint it black and then bring it up to the post to make sure that uh, it fits the flag because I haven't really tested that yet and see if they actually notice. So anyway, check out all the other fabrication stuff. Uh, I got plenty of them. Uh, thanks a lot for subscribing and helping out the channel. That def definitely means a lot. Uh, hopefully we should have some shirts out soon. If you really want to support uh, support the channel, we should have some uh, some shirts. I got a couple designs from my artist, aka Ray, and uh, they're looking pretty darn good. I like it. I'm going to support it. Anyway, yeah, let's get this thing painted. Until next time, take it easy, have fun, and get out there and build something. Basically, most of the stuff I had laying around the shop, build it, make it useful. That and then we'll clean up my corner a little bit because I don't have all this crap in the corner. Anyway, take it easy, have fun. Catch you later.